Have you heard about how the EKNMC has said with regards to the implementation of their English language requirements? And do you even know why they said they were going to implement these new changes in January 2023, but nothing has happened? Do you think it's still advisable to wait on the EKNMC to implement these new changes so that you tap into the benefit? Well, in this video, these are the major things I'm going to talk about. So if you think the information in here will give you much, much value, then why don't you come with me as you look at what the EKNMC has said so far with regard to their English language requirement. Are they going to really, really implement it? This is a question for the day. And I believe that by the time you finish watching this video, this question might have been answered. Come with me as we look at that. If you are new to my channel, I really appreciate you for being here for the first time. And that if you're a returning subscriber, it's because of you that I'm always motivated to make new videos. My name is Seth Dapo Ajima and you can simply call me Kobe. So as early moment, you're going to talk about the new information the AKNMC has come up with with regards to their changes in the English language requirement. You know, we are all waiting on them to implement the new changes that apparently you can combine your test results, two test results within the space of 12 months that apparently you can use an employer reference and a whole lot of that. But up to now, nothing has happened. So today, the AKNMC has come up with an update with regards to the implementation. So the question is, are they going to implement it or they've postponed it? This is what you are going to look at in this video. I found this information on the popular news site in the UK, which is the nationtimes.net. So what I want to say is that if the information I'm going to give here is wrong, then probably the website is actually wrong. But I strongly believe that this information is coming from the authentic source. So I'm going to read and then give a commentary alongside. And along the day, you'll be able to decide as to whether it is worth it to wait for the EKNMC or reset the exams and then get the actual score they are looking out for. So let's see what happens. Changes to the Nursing and Midwifery Council's English language requirement will start to be implemented at the beginning of February. It has been announced. We were told last year that the implementation will start in January 2023. We weren't given any specific date as to whether it's 31st January, 1st January, 25th January, or whatsoever. And then here they are at it again telling us that the implementation is going to start at the beginning of february so the question is is it first february is it second february is it 10th february what is their definition of the beginning of february during a meeting of the nmc's council held last week that is on the 25th of january the regulator said the new changes were said to be fully operationalized by this summer the move follows an eight weeks consultation which received a record-breaking 34,000 responses and approval from the Regulators Governing Council last year. To pass the English language test, an applicant needs to achieve a score of B in the Occupational Test, which is the OET, or 7 in the Alternative International English Language Testing System, which is the IELTS Advanced Exam. In each of the listening, speaking, reading parts of the test, and then C+, or 6.5 in the writing domain. Under the changes, the NMC now accepts combined test results as long as no part of the test is scored more than half a grade or point below the NMC required for the respective domains, which lowers the minimum score for writing to C or 6. So apparently, I've done justice to the changes. I've given a detailed explanation of the changes that came up, so you can check this from here or check in the description box for the link to that video. So additionally, the regulator is extending the period in which a person can combine test scores from six months to 12 months to allow for greater flexibility and more time to prepare before we take in the test. So actually, these are some of the changes they are highlighting that now the duration for one to combine two test results has been extended from six months to 12 months. And that is the first one of the changes Okay, that came up. The other change that will come into effect is that the NMC will allow applicants who have worked in the UK health and care system for 12 out of the last 24 months to submit an employer reference as evidence of English language proficiency instead of a test. So that is the second change that came up that if apparently you live in the UK and you have worked for one year in the last two years, you are deemed to use an employer reference. And let's say you wrote IELTS and uh, had a score of let's say half a grade in any of the aspects. What that means here is that you can use an employer reference as well. But I'm really, really surprised. The UK NMC has said something about this that I know the day it will shock you. You know, let's go on and then see what happens. This option will be available to applicants who have trained in English in a non-majority English speaking country. 
and those who only just met the required score on an OET or IELTS test. During the meeting, Matthew McLelland, the Executive Director for Strategy and Insights at the NMC said, we do expect that whilst maintaining a really high standard of English score, which is required for safe and then effective practice, this will allow more people to join the register. So for them, they think that coming up with changes to the English language requirements, which is the OET and the IELTS, will go a long way to help people who are interested in working in the UK to join their register. But then the question is, why are they still delaying? Why did they tell us that it's coming up in January 2023 and now they have given us a new date? I mean, which we are not even sure that they will be able to fulfill. Let's see what they've said. I mean, they've outlined some reasons why the changes is delaying and one or two stars that you have to know. And for me, I'm happy sharing this information with you because I believe that hearing it will go a long way to help you make an informed decision as to whether you should rely on the UK NMC to combine your IELTS results to use an employer reference or, I mean, whichever way. So, let's see why they said the implementation has been extended or why they couldn't implement the changes in January 2023 and has now been extended to February beginning. Okay, so to continue, it says Mr. McLellan added that the test combining and then allowing supplementary information if you are trained in English in a non-majority English speaking country would go live at the start of February. He said, as always with changes like this, we are testing the IT right up until the last minute. So we can't give an exact date until we have the green light from that process. But as I see, we are expecting it in February. So there's no certainty, there's no assurance in this case. I mean, some of these things should help you make an informed decision as to whether you should still rely on the implementation to be able to retire the EKNMC or apparently dump that old resource somewhere, risk it, and then get the actual score you are looking out for. So that we didn't have to be thinking of combining, we didn't have to be thinking of using your employer reference or whatsoever. So let me take that statement again, it's very important. He said, as always, it changes like this. We are testing the IT write up until the last minute. They are testing their IT write up until the last minute. So we can't give an exact date until we have the green light from that process. So apparently, you and I don't know when the green light will be short or when they will be convinced that their IT process is up and doing and that they can implement the whole process. So now they've said the beginning of February. But when you look at the latter part of the sentence, it says, but as i see we are expecting it in february so the question is is it first february is it second february is it 28th february let's wait and see what happens meanwhile accepting supplementary information from employers for people who have just missed out on a test call will come a little bit later in the year due to technical changes that are required to implement the change mr mclellan said let me take that information again. It's very, very important. So this is to people who are waiting on the employer reference, apparently to make an informed decision to register the EK and MC. I also mentioned of the fact that I won't be surprised if the day they set, that is the January 2023, is postponed. And here we are, it has been postponed. So let me take that statement again. It says, meanwhile, accepting supplementary information from employers for people who have just missed out on a test score will come a little bit later in the year due to technical changes that are required to implement the change, Mr. McLean said. So from my understanding, what it means is that if the other changes are made, the employer references won't come up yet. It will wait until later in the year because they think, I mean, there are some kind of technical changes that needs to be looked into before it is implemented. So what I want to say is that if you are already in the UK, have worked for one year in the last two years, and you have worked in the healthcare setting and then you are looking to use your employer reference for your UK NMC registration, then I think um, there's a little bit of disappointment here from the UK NMC. I mean, I've got friends who are waiting patiently to use their employer reference. Apparently, they've worked in the UK for like two years, three years, and they are fit for the employer reference. They are patiently waiting to use it. I think I have to let them know this information so that they either sit for a new test or you know, so this is what you said, and you and I can't do anything about it at the moment. I mean, that's the information, and it's up to you to act on it or leave it. To continue, it says, it comes as the number of internationally trained nursing staff in the UK is increasing rapidly. 
with nurses coming from abroad accounting for nearly half those who registered for the first time in the last six months, according to the NMC. The regulator confirmed during the meeting that relevant individuals who were either waiting to reshoot the test or who were appealing their test scores will be notified of the changes where appropriate. So the long and short of it all is that the EKNMC is looking forward to implement the changes in February. So the question is, are you still going to wait on the EKNMC to use their changes as a way of proving your English language proficiency? The other thing I also want to highlight is that they said the employer reference is going to be implemented a later in the year. So there's no specific date to this. It may be in December this year. It may be in August this year, September, June, or however. No date has been allocated to it yet. And the reason is that there are some kind of technical changes they have to look into because the number of international nurses in the UK at the moment waiting to use employer references and a whole lot of that have increased. And I think, you know, they are doing some kind of background check to see the authenticity of using the employer reference and that is why they are delaying things so what i want to say is that if it's your aim to use your employer reference apparently your employer may be willing to give you that kind of information to be able to use as your english language proficiency then um, this information is much more of a way to help you rewind your minds thermostat to either sit for the oet or the IELTS so that the process doesn't delay but what I also want to say is that if you can patiently wait to whatever time they'll come up with this implementation, then that is also a decision for you to make. So this is what I wanted to let you know. If you want to read the whole story, I mean half time and then digest whatever information I've said on here, I'll leave the link to this blog from the Nursing Times website in the description box. Okay, so just check that one out and let's see how it goes. Thank you very much for being with me up to this point. If you have not subscribed to my channel, Hit the subscribe button and become part of the family we learn together also share this video to people out there who are waiting on the uk nmc to implement the changes to take action thank you very much and hope to see you in my next video bye